Hello, welcome back to the My Mac Podcast. In this episode, Jalen will be interviewing a digital arts alumni. Zayla will be talking about body positivity. Brooke will be doing her word of the day. Alex will be discussing Dungeons and Dragons. Lily will be interviewing the Construction Trades Program. Leah will be interviewing the Educational Careers Program. And I will be interviewing the CAD Engineering Programs. I hope you enjoy. Hi, and welcome to my segment of the MyMac Podcast. Joining me today is Jada Waltz, a former digital arts student who runs her own photography program. Hi, Jada. Tell us about yourself. So I actually run my own photography business. It's called JM Photography. stands for Jada Marie Photography. So I actually do a ton of different photography. I do graphic design, logos. I do portraits. I do all sorts of photography. Great. How did your educational journey shape your profession and who you are today? It helped me learn a lot. I was pushed out of my comfort zone. I was able to start speaking in front of people. I learned a lot throughout the programs. It was, it just helped me a lot. Is there a favorite memory that you could share from your time here at the Career Center? Favorite memory would be being able to go around to the different programs and actually being able to take the photos and seeing what they were able to experience and actually capturing those. Great. Are there any skills or qualities you learned from being in the digital arts program? I learned a lot of different skills and it helped. I still use them today. It helps me a lot. I was able to learn Photoshop because before I didn't know how to use Photoshop. Now I'm able to use Photoshop in my photos. In my wedding photos, I like to overlay the pictures and that's something I learned here in the Career Center. Great. If you could go back and give advice to your younger self, what would it be? If I was able to go back, I would tell myself to keep pushing, make sure to keep doing what you wanna do and pursue your retired business. And when the digital arts program first started, I understand they had a close connection to the MCC college courses. Could you give us a little insight on that? Yeah, so when we actually first started here at the program, we didn't even know that we were actually going to be in doing college classes. So the first day we went over there and we found out that we were doing college classes and it helped us a lot, especially me. I got to learn a bunch of different techniques and I got to learn color correction and Photoshop more in detail Photoshop than I was here. Great. And that's all I have for today. Thank you for joining us and we'll catch you on the next one. For our next segment, Zayla will talk about body positivity. Hello, welcome to my segment on the My Mac podcast. Today we'll be discussing body image and self-love. According to the National Eating Disorders Association, around 91% of women are unhappy with their bodies and around 80% of men are unhappy with their appearance in some way. The impact of body dissatisfaction can be quite significant in the way people view themselves. It also leads into many different mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, and suicidal thoughts. A great way to prevent these things is to reach out to someone to, dis to express your feelings and thoughts on your self-image. As we move forward into more modern times, social media has become a growing concern. Apps such as Instagram have been a known cause of self-image issues due to the unrealistic body types and filters. One may find themselves comparing themselves to influencers or friends' posts that they see on online media apps. Around 70% of teenage girls say that social media affects their perception of beauty and their bodies. Cultural and ethnic differences also play a big role in body image. Each culture has their own perception of the perfect body. In Western culture and East Asian cultures, a slimmer, more petite body is the beauty standard. However, in Western culture, body positivity has been significantly growing. Whereas in Pacific Island cultures, a larger body is the ideal since it is associated with wealth, health, and fertility. As you can see, every culture has their own preferences that people within those cultures may not fall into. That is why the promotion of self-love is extremely important. Practicing self-compassion and focusing on self-care is a great way to practice self-love. Treating yourself with kindness and prioritizing self-care activities is a great way to start. 
Taking, care, taking a break from social media to focus on bettering yourself can be extremely beneficial as well as practicing daily affirmations. Picking up new habits like meditation or taking time to yourself can be a great way to clear your mind and focus on the bigger things in life. Vibes are temporary and life is short, so why spend that time worrying on how you look? It's okay not to be perfect as no one can ever be just that. Thank you for listening to my segment on the MyMac Podcast and I will see you next time. And now, Brooke will be doing her word of the day. (sighs) Hey guys, I don't really want to be here today, but I was forced into this room, so I guess we have to do the word of the day again. Um, the word of the day is responsibility, so, Reef, I just want to ask you, (laughs) what do you think the word responsibility means? Uh, take accountability for things, and, like own up to what you do you're just so smart aren't you yeah incredible (sighs) anyways what have you done recently that's responsible make sure my lizard doesn't die take care of like (laughs) take care of them you have a lizard yeah that's actually disgusting my bad that's enough out of you (laughs) what do you think responsibility means keegan um doing the stuff that you're like responsible to do i guess (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like if you have a chore then if you do your chore that's responsible if you go to work that's responsible so just go to bed on time that's responsible being a human is responsible no <laughs> doing the right thing is responsible oh yeah he read about that so when have you done the right thing recently well absolute silence i've folks. been doing the dishes lately okay that's oh, my that's been my chore dishes. at home i don't have a job i'm broke <laughs> you don't work at five below no you do though <laughs> next so now i'm here with abby and trent and abby what do you think about responsibility i think it means to be owning up to your like what you've maybe done wrong or you have or the things that you have to do that's why i think responsibility is sorry i fell asleep for a second um, Trent, what do you think responsibility is? Taking care of stuff. Like? Like needs. Okay. Um, when have you been responsible? When have you taken care of your needs? Well, when it comes to, like, getting food or getting stuff you need, like resources. When have you been responsible, Abby? When I do, like, my chores or do homework for school. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thanks. Bye, guys. Boredom. Get out of my chairs now. (laughs) Okay, guys. This is my last guest, I guess. Guest, I guess. Hey, Winter. How's it going? Oh, it's okay. It's all right? Yeah. So, uh, have you heard about my word of the day? Uh, uh, Yeah, I've heard rumors. Rumors? What are the rumors? Um... Oh, well. <laughs> Bad rumors. Yeah. Bad rumors. Okay, um, what do you think about the word responsibility? Um, I think... Define what I think of, like... Huh? Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think the word, like... Do you mean like what I think the word means or like what do you think the word means? Oh, what do I think the word means? I was like being able to like take <laughs> being able to be accountable for your actions. All right. When have you been responsible recently? Uh this weekend when I didn't let my dog get pregnant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh. And that will be the end of my section, folks. Thank you for watching the word of the day. <laughs>And now, Alex will discuss Dungeons & Dragons. Hello, my name is Alex, and welcome to the MyMac Podcast. Today I will be interviewing Gabriel Hollander, the founder of Lakeview's Tabletop Club. Welcome, Gabriel. Hi, it's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. What exactly is D&D? So, Dungeons & Dragons is, it is the middle ground, it is a TTRPG, a tabletop role-playing game. And those are, in general, the middle ground between 
improv theater and board games. It is the center where like you, your characters, your actions, you narrate them to a dungeon master, the person kind of in charge of the game, right? You play one character and then they play the rest of them. Um, you, na you narrate your actions and then they decide based on a roll of a dice, be that 3d6 or a d20, which is 20 sided, they're really nice, whether or not the thing succeeds or fails. And can you tell us about your experience in uh, Dungeon Master? I started with 3.5, which is an older edition of Dungeons & Dragons, to the current 5e1, which you'll see in like Stranger Things or something. The great thing about it I've found is that Dungeon Mastering is a very heavy responsibility. You are responsible for your friends having fun. You know, you're responsible for making sure that things go smoothly. And you can't get too married to your ideas because in the end, the goal is to make sure your players are having fun. I mentioned earlier that you are f the founder of Lakeview's Tabletop Club. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so we started Tabletop Club. Uh, we started with only three people and then it just kept growing and growing. And it's been, it's been a huge blessing to me throughout my entire high school career. I'm so thankful for everyone who comes, everyone who helped me start it. Uh, Joshua Thielander, the teacher who sponsors it and watches over it. I'm very thankful for him. And I'm, I'm so blessed to be able to do so much for my school through it. Thank you. And what would you say to recommend D&D &D to a friend? So I think the great part about Dungeons & Dragons is that it's a very good escape or it's a very good creative work. Um, preparedness is very important and you will learn to be prepared if you are a dungeon master. You will learn that improv skills, you will learn how to talk to people, and in general it will make you feel better. You, you, look f you begin to look forward to D&D &D at the end of weeks or months or however long your intervals between sessions are because you want to play it. You want to be back in the world. You want to escape your current world. And I think that's one of its great powers is just to take you out of who you are and put you in the body of someone else. Thank you for listening and tuning into the My Mac podcast. And now Lily will be interviewing the construction program. Hello, my name is Lily and I will be interviewing the construction instructor, Mr. Bunting, today. Can you tell me why you chose to become an instructor at the MAC? Uh, I always intended to be a teacher. I have a bachelor's degree in social studies. Um, but um, after I got out of college, I took a job with a uh, building supplying company. Uh, made some good money. But I always kind of like was like, ah, I should you know, use my degree. Um, and then this job later in life, this job opened up and saw an opportunity to get out of the field and back in to the classroom. So I applied and luckily I got the job. Um, what struggles did you overcome at, on your path to becoming a teacher? Well, I didn't become a teacher right out of college. So I had to, uh, to become this teacher, the construction trades teacher. I had to get my builder's license and, um, which I did without intent of teaching, but because of business. Uh, so it was a long path. I had to have a totally different knowledge than the, the skill set I learned in college, except for obviously the educational um, classes that I took. Uh, so it was just a different path. But um, so just getting skills to be able to teach this class uh, is pretty difficult because it's such a broad class. It doesn't just isn't just building it's electric heating cooling plumbing so um to get, gain that knowledge also is it's it's tough to find somebody that knows that a little bit about everything you know hmm. what do you like best about working at the mac i like that the students here should want to be here um so in normal setting in a high school you know, if you teach algebra, you know that probably 75% of the kids that you're teaching do not really want to be here. They're taking it because they have to. Here at the Career Center, people are giving two and a half hours of their day up um, by choice, and they expect you to teach them something too. So it puts a little pressure on us as teachers that, you know, you, 
the students made this big commitment to be here they don't want to feel like it's a waste of their time they want to you know they want to feel like they're learning something uh so that's that's what i like here is that the students do want to be here for the most part and do expect to be doing something like right now my students are currently dusty and dirty covered in mortar and uh, most of them are pretty happy about it because they're doing something instead of being in the classroom so is there any prior knowledge a student should have before entering your program nope no any just a willingness to do stuff and learn um math is uh geometry is pretty much what we we go up to um, we do have to do a lot of geometry but uh, by the time they're juniors they should have already passed geometry but um, going to geometry and under geometry and understanding geometry are two different things I've learned over the, the past nine years so uh, we still have to start from zero a lot of times there so it doesn't really matter if they have that or not um, is there anything you would want to add about your program to upcoming sophomores um, no I mean we're, we build a house uh, so if you come in in your junior year you're either going to start from scratch and then build the house and then finish the house or you're going to finish the house and then build the next house so depending on what year you come in as um, we're trying to fine-tune that so we cover all the basics uh, trades um, so you get a broad experience so you can decide if there's one of the trades that you like really are interested in like a lot of times like electric you know, when we do electric, there I've had several students go, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, and pursue that after after I leave my class. Um, heating and cooling, I've had a couple of students go into Ferris State University and get their degree in heating and cooling, and, um, or just general, bend, just I like building, so they just go right into the field afterwards in the union. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Lily, and this has been an interview with the construction instructor, Mr. Bunting. Thank you for watching and listening. In this upcoming segment, Leah will be interviewing the education program. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Leah, and in today's interview, I'm going to be interviewing the education instructor, Mrs. Rise Big. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got down this path? Um, well, I never started off on the path of education, actually. I um, left high school thinking I was going to be a graphic designer, and then I actually switched my major into finance and graduated with a bachelor's in finance. Um, but then it was about, I don't know, two years into my working at a bank in, a com in the commercial loan department that I decided um, that finance was not for me, and I needed to do something else. And I have always loved reading and working with kids. So um, I went back to Grand Valley State University and got my teaching certificate for um, English and economics. And that led me to the MAC here where I used to teach English. And then um, when the state uh, was really promoting more teacher education programs, um, we opened one up here and that's how I ended up teaching it. What were your struggles getting to this point? Um, I think the biggest struggle is is time. To become a teacher, you really have to be able to um, balance the coursework. And then also with your student teaching, you can't have any other job or anything like that because it takes so much of your time. So I think that was probably the biggest struggle when I was going through college. Um, and when I got out of college, it was a time in the economy where it, there were not very many teaching positions. So that was a big struggle too. Um, I did a lot of subbing that first year and did some homebound teaching through Greenville. Um, and then ultimately the, the job here, the English position opened up. What do you like best working at the MAC? I really like the MAC because we get to take students who already have an idea of what they want to do with their lives and kind of help um, I don't want to say like push them over the edge, but help give them that springboard to jump from, whether it's exposing them to different careers that they didn't really know were out there or part of a path or helping them discover a career that they really are passionate about, or maybe helping them um, cross off a career pathway that they don't want to go into. I just think that this is a really important job um, 
because that I think that is really important for students coming from a person who went into an industry that I ended up not staying in and having to to redo all of that in my life in my 20s. Um, I would have probably benefited from a program where I could where I could have said like, nope, finance is not for me before I spent a bunch of money in college on that. What does the education program provide versus a two year program? Um, so the biggest piece that the educational careers class provides is a chance to really go into classrooms and be part of um, a, a classroom working with a teacher. So my first year students right now are getting ready to do that next week. They'll go out three days a week and they get to assist in local classrooms, whether it's working one on one with students, um, pulling small groups out and doing some reading or math help with them. They get to go with them to different special classes or if they're working in the middle school, um, they do, I think, a lot more of the intervention pieces. Um, so then when they can come back as a second year, they get to do four days a week out where they really are learning more about what it's like to be a teacher, not just standing up in front of the class and reading a book or doing a fun little arts and crafts project, but um, you really get to see what it's like behind the scenes and all of the different work and the, um, the pieces that go into being a teacher that students don't really get to see on a regular basis. Is there any prior knowledge your students need to know? I wouldn't say there's prior knowledge, um, but being able to like read at grade level, do math decently on your own. Um, I think those skills are really helpful, but I think the biggest piece is just being motivated to get things done, um, motivated to try new things and to take some risks. I think those those kind of things are probably more important than any sort of prior knowledge that you'd come in with. Is there anything you'd like to share that we didn't touch on? Um, I think that if anyone's interested in joining educational careers, um, they should know that the state is really pushing for people to be become teachers. So they're putting a lot of money toward it. So in the past, people may have heard about like it takes four or five years to become a teacher or six years. And there's it's so much college and the student teaching and it's it's seems like a lot. But um, a lot of the colleges that we've worked with and the state have done a lot to take down some of those financial barriers and those time barriers. Um, and we actually have a great partnership right now with Ferris State University. So students can become Ferris State University students in my class and dual enroll and then leave with up to nine college credits that go directly towards teaching. So that's another way to kind of offset those financial pieces. Um, there's a lot of grants out there from the state for future teachers. So if teaching is something that someone wants to do, this really is the best place for them to jumpstart that career. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That will be all. Thanks for stopping by. If you want to learn more about the educational program, go to mymac.com. And now, I will be interviewing the CAD and engineering programs. Hello. Welcome back to the MyMac podcast. Today, I am interviewing members of the CAD program. Right here is the instructor of the CAD and engineering programs, Mr. Johnson. Hello. Hello. So, Mr. Johnson, can you tell me about your history? How did you get into the CAD and engineering fields? I was doing CAD and engineering since I was in high school. So, it's kind of a, it was one of those career paths that I went with. Teaching wasn't necessarily the career path, but CAD and engineering was. So that's kind of led to teaching at some point. All right. And over here, we have Caitlin, current engineering student. Hi. What attracted you to uh, the engineering program? Um, ever since middle school, I've always thought, engineering, let's go with that. Um, but especially since I started here, I figured out like what I want to go into, which is mechanical engineering to do with bow equipment, like archery. Um, and I already knew I wanted to do something with that, and then engineering just led to that. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about your program? Uh, so there's a program. It's actually two programs. So it's a CAD program and an engineering program. We just kind of overlap them and do them both together. Um, the CAD program is should technically be design, called a design program because I kind of lead it up as we start with basic drafting and design, um, doing geometric construction, getting through um, understanding line qualities and line types, um, working up through the beginnings of hand drafting, kind of a history of drafting, and then bring it up into more common, more um, current states with getting into the CAD and doing designs with CAD um, engineering-wise. 
or design wise and then engineering is kind of a second stage of that so once you've learned to you know design things now you got to learn how to go through that whole design process um, take it into fabrication and physical concepts that you can actually use so we do a lot of testing and, and fabrication at that point so that's engineering how would you best describe your experience in your programs? Um, how would I best describe my experience? Can you reword the question? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, like, your overall, like, have you enjoyed it? Has it been educational? Like it has been wonderful. Um, personally for me, I'm out here all day this year. So obviously I loved it enough to get rid of half of my day at the high school and just be out here. Um, a lot is learned. There's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun at the same time. Um, and yeah, best way I can describe it. All right. And then, can I add to that? Yeah. So, I mean, she, Caitlin, yes, like she says, she's here all day. So that's an option you can have with a program. You can do CAD. Um, haven't had it yet, but it, technically a senior could come out here and take CAD in the morning, engineering in the afternoon. But where Caitlin is back from CAD last year, she's actually doing an advanced engineering level. So we're, we're expanding it as much as we possibly can to accommodate the students. That's our biggest goal. So, What is the overall goal of your program? Well, I guess in this case, programs. My overall goal is always to educate the students to be successful in life. Um, and I say in life, not specifically CAD or engineering, because I try to give them the background of, you know, they should be able to take what they learn here at the Career Center and be able to apply it to any career pathway they take. Um, so that's always been my goal since I got into education is that I want students to be successful. All right. Are you uh, planning to work in, your, in the engineering field? Yes, I am. Um... Right now, my plan is to go to MCC and then transfer to Ferris for a mechanical engineering degree, and then we'll see what company decides to deal with me from there. <laughs> All right. Sounds like a plan. What are the uh, benefits uh, students will uh, receive by taking your programs? So when you say benefits, so like what are added features that they might be able to accomplish from the, taking the program? Like that or the skills they will gain throughout? Okay. So like I say, the skills, if I've done my job right, the skills would apply to anything. So um, what they get out of taking the Career Center classes is they also get um, college credits. So we do have a lot of articulation agreements set up with MCC. Um, I'm working on stuff with like Ferris and some of the other colleges as well. We also go through a lot of competition items. Um, so we compete in a lot of the state and you know, basically state competitions between Square One Education Network, um, the Michigan Industrial Technology Education Society. Um, Ferris has got a couple of competitions that we try to get involved with. So those competitions, it, it teaches them those other skills of being competitive um, in the field of what we're working on. But again, you know, they get college credits, they get you know skills, life skills that they could apply anywhere. Well, I'd like to thank you uh, both for appearing here today. Thank you. It's been, thank you. It's been very nice and educational. And I want to thank you for listening and or watching. Uh, for more information on the CAD program, visit mymac.com. With all that said, I will see you in the next one. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the MyMac Podcast. We hope you enjoyed, and we hope to see you in the next one.